Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to you that are here with us and uh, you who are watching with us streaming uh, live. Thank you for being here. Um, wanted to tell you, I'm Chuck uh, Anderson. I'm one of the, the uh, uh, well, former elders here. They kind of kicked me off the board. Uh, but I, you have to track one of them down, find out what that's about. Um, Pastor uh, Nathan is in preaching in Elk Grove today, uh, so I'll be working with uh, Pastor Brad today. Uh, why don't you take a moment, greet one another, uh, share a hello, a handshake, a high five, an elbow, whatever works for you. If you'll remain standing, we'll continue our worship with him. 795, Voices Raised to You We Offer. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them 
and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, as your brother in Christ, have the joy to announce the grace of God to each of you and declare to you the forgiveness of every single one of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. We continue with our worship with How Can I Thank You, Lord, verses 1, 4, and 5. Our first lesson this morning from Scripture is from Exodus chapter 34, beginning with verse 6. And he passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. This is the word of the Lord. And our second lesson is from 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, you, of course, will remember this, not the wedding hymn, um, a verse that Pastor Nathan mentioned to us. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all that I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there is are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So now we're going to do the children's message. So if we could have the kids come down, Pastor will take care of that. Hi, guys. How you doing? Good to see you. Hi. 
Come on up. Hi. Come on up if you want. Come on. So glad you're here. Yeah. So, let me see. So I got I brought a book with me today. Anybody know where that book is? That's the Bible. Yeah, that's the Holy Bible. Yeah. You know what what Jesus called the Holy Bible? He was praying to God the Father and he said, uh, God the Father, he says, Father, your word is truth. Your word is true. So every word in here is God's word to us. It's true. And I, I always like that because, you know, I've been wrong sometimes. Have you guys ever been wrong sometimes? In fact, I think everybody's been wrong sometimes. Sometimes I'm absolutely sure of things, like where I put my car keys and I can't find them, or where I put my glasses and I can't, I'm absolutely sure, right? But I made a mistake. I was wrong. God is never wrong. It's his wonderful gift to us to give us his truth. This is the word of God, his truth. So we're going to sing about that, okay? So let's, let's stand up. Let's stand up. I'll, I'm going to teach a, a song. So first of all, we're going to spell that. that. That's called the Bible. So let's spell Bible. Repeat after me. B. I. B. L. E. So this is how the first part of the song goes. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, can we do that? That's like the sign language. Yes, that's the book for me. Let's just do that much. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. And here's the fun part. Ready? It goes like this. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Ready? Let's do that. I stand alone. Ready? I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. All right, we can do it all now. Ready? B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's a book for me. Stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Ready? We'll go, we're going to do it slow this time. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Ready? I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. All right, we're going to do it a little faster. All right, ready? All right, you guys got it though, right? You got it? All right, here we go. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Woo! All right. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift to us, your word to us, and we pray every day that we might rejoice in it, that we might always know Jesus through your word and, and how you guide our lives as well in your love. We pray in your name and all God's people say amen. So uh, those of you who are going to go to Children's Church, you, you can follow Jen right out, and, and those are, who are not, you can uh, sit with your folks again, okay? Uh, by the way, I, I didn't want to forget to say this. Um, as you leave today, parents, if you go to the left, there's a little survey to take, and then uh, Jen's going to talk to you about maybe volunteering, too, in, in the, in the min children's ministry program. She's our new uh, family minister here at St. Matthew. We give thanks to God for her. I remembered, huh? Woohoo! All right, you guys. So, let me see. So you can either go to children's church or you can go back to mom or dad, Okay. So, um, let's continue with the gospel lesson. Would you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel? The uh, gospel this morning is written from John chapter 6, beginning with verse 60. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascended to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me until, unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Do you want to leave too? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Um, you may be seated. We're going to be singing My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, welcome to each of you who are here in person, also those online. Uh, we, we know that uh, God is not bound by space and time, so as we speak the things of God, His Word, the Spirit, is called the sword of the Spirit. The Spirit of God touches our her- hearts, whether we're in person and, and, and can enjoy the fellowship that we have in Jesus here, or, or whether you're at home, and uh, the Spirit of God is there to touch your heart there as well, and, and your family, um, and we pray a blessing on, on all of you. Uh, elephant in the room, we're going to begin this today, uh, and if you're just walking in, no idea what this is. I, I did a memorial service yesterday, and I paused, and I wanted to tell the folks, we're not really worshiping elephants here. We, we're, we're, we're starting this, this new series, The Elephant in the Room, and what it is, is the last few weeks, we've asked you for those questions that are kind of the elephant in the room, those questions that maybe we, we dare not want to ask, right? Uh, I compared it to uh, at the dinner table, you know, what questions in a family aren't you going to bring up? Might be politics, might be religion, might be something else, but we just don't go there because it's too uncomfortable. Well, we live in an uncomfortable time, and so we've asked you for those questions, and, and I'll tell you what, there were some great questions in there. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to, um, that we can get to, to most of them. If by chance we don't get to your question, feel free to call Pastor Nathan, <laughs> and, and he'll be happy to sit now, or call me as well. Yeah, so, uh, but, but uh, today we're, we're just going to uh, k- kind of lay the, the groundwork for it. I, I think that's important. I was, I was a, a science major, and then I added PE because I was, I was going to go into teaching. I guess God knew something different, but I thought I was going to go into teaching. I tell you what, you've never played, uh, uh, you've never lived until you've played Duck, Duck, Goose with a bunch of PE majors. I mean, we played, I'll never forget that day, we played for blood. We were learning these kids' games, you know. They were a great group in this one class. We, um, we, we had to make up our own games. And, and really what we were doing when we would, we, I would invent this game and I would have to explain, not, not just the rules, but kind of the mindset. You can imagine playing soccer with basketball rules. Wouldn't work, huh? There's a whole world that you step into with each game. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a way of looking at things. It's a worldview. It's, it's a, a, a mindset, right? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today as we approach these questions. What is our worldview? What is our mindset? What is our heart set? And, and, and it starts with this. We start with the heart of God, and we never leave it. We start with the heart of God, and we never leave it. When I, I, some of you know, maybe two months ago, I, I uh, took some time off, went down to the beach, was just alone for a while, and I remember watch, walking on the beach, and I, I found a piece of that polished glass. Uh, really, all over the world, they make things out of it. It's really kind of amazing. This glass had all kinds of sharp edges, but because of the ocean, 
it, it was just re- extremely smooth. I, have it, I was going to bring it today, but I didn't want to lose it because I, I keep looking at it. And, and it really struck me that that was God's love in my life. That it was like this great ocean that um, lots of times I maybe didn't see moving. Or maybe I didn't think that that love could be for me because I screwed it up, screwed my life up, right? And yet that love just kept washing over me and continues to do so in ways that I don't understand and ways that I put together in this great mystery that we call our lives. But that, that's the love of God for us. It's this great ocean that is absolutely there, even if we can't understand how or where or when it works and those types of things. Uh, we start with the heart of God, and we never, ever leave it as we approach these, these uh, elephant-in-the-room questions, which means we start here, huh? For God so loved the world. Jesus is called the final revelation of God, right? In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, the first chapter of Hebrews. For God so loved the world, this is what love looks like. If you ever doubt his love, you ever doubt that ocean of love washing over you, you go back to the cross. And and the Bible says this, it says, God is love. Isn't that an amazing statement? God is love. This is how God shows us his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. It's how we see his love is to look at the cross. I don't know where you're at in all of this. Maybe... Maybe you're struggling with that. Maybe you're not sure of this Jesus stuff. Maybe you look all around you and see such brokenness and you wonder where God could be. When we talk about these things, the Spirit of God touches our hearts. You see, what sin does is it separates us from God. We were created to be happy and whole, only in connection with God. Adam and Eve, when they, when they sinned, they ran away from God. Do you remember? They were so utterly alone because pretty soon they were throwing each other under the bus as well. And, and so they were utterly alone in their lives. Jesus steps into our world, the place where we're utterly alone, and he takes his bro- our brokenness upon himself and he connects us to God again through the forgiveness of our sins. And even as I speak these words, the spirit of God is touching your heart, that your heart's at home. And he's whispering to your heart that this is true for you, maybe for the first time maybe to renew you in, in that wonderful light. Maybe you've drifted into the shadows uh, and maybe to strengthen you in this wonderful reality of God's love for you. This is the place we begin as we look at these questions and we will never leave this place. We will absolutely trust God's love in every single question of our lives. In, um, in the book of Exodus, And I think this is important because lots of times people say, well, how about the God of the Old Testament? Well, this is in Exodus. And I I, I, I wanna set this up for you, okay? Uh, Moses has come down the mountain with the 10 C's, right? The 10 commandments. And the children of Israel are worshiping a a golden calf and doing all this horrible stuff with their lives and with their bodies. It's just a horrible scene. And Moses gets so upset, he smashes the 10 commandments. And this is God's answer. He says, come up and get them again. And then when Moses goes up, he describes who he is, the Lord. The the word is Yahweh. It means I am. In other words, he's saying, I never change. I am the great I am. And where where does he doesn't change? He's compassionate. You know, Jesus, all those centuries later, he looked and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Remember? He hurt for them. This is who God is. I am the great I am. In his great love, he is compassionate and full of grace, undeserved love towards us and towards that ancient people, slow to anger. You know, I, I thought about this. I was at the beach years ago, and, and uh, these two little kids were making this, this sandcastle, and I saw this big kid walk through two of them, and they just, for the heck of it, came through and destroyed it all, and these kids were crying, you know, and I had to do, it was everything I could do not to jump up and, and do best, something bad, right? I got so angry with that. We have destroyed God's world. We have destroyed creation. We have destroyed each other. And God is long-suffering and slow to anger, abounding in love and faithful in that love. Go ahead. 
maintaining love to thousands, and I think many commentators, I think they're right, there's a comparison here, maintaining love to thousands of generations and forgiving wickedness and rebellion and sin and certainly punishing, but it says three, third and fourth generation. His love is like an ocean. It's who he is. Where do you need to know that in your life so you can live it out? That sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But I think almost like a knee-jerk reaction, we doubt that ocean of his love. It's just part of who we are, part of our, our sinfulness. See, in, in questions like this, uh, where, where was God when? What do, we do? What, what do we do when we ask that question? We're doubting his love. Where was God when in my life when that happened? Where was God when that happened in the world over there? Where was God when? Or where is God now? And what I have to go through. Where is he? Where, what are we doing? We're doubting his love. We're taking our eyes off the cross. We're taking his lives off the incarnation. Jesus, I'm with you always. We're taking our eyes. Where is he now? Where is he now in the world? What are we doing? We are doubting his love. In this series, we will never, ever leave the place. We will never doubt his love. Why does God allow that? And we test him. How about this? How about that? Do you have any explanations for that? Come on, God. Was it Jesus Christ superstar? Come on. Herod says, just walk across my swimming pool, baby, right? Answer every question I have, or I'm going to doubt your love. It's interesting. In the Old Testament book of Isaiah, we, we love to quote this verse sometimes, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, uh, neither are your ways my ways. And we think it's about God's great wisdom and knowledge, right? But it's not. You see, we doubt God's love because he think, we think he's like us. We don't think he's the great I am, the one that never changes. We think he's like us, fickle human beings. These words were spoken in connection with this. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord. He will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Where we don't finally understand God and his wondrous forgiving love to us. That's where he's so different from us. That's why we doubt his love. Book of Job. You ever read the book? Tell you all that stuff happened to me. I'm, I'd be doubting his love. I'll tell you that. He lost all 10 kids, right? He lost everything he owned. In one day, it was gone. And so he starts to question God's love. And God finally says to him, who is this who darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? You don't know stuff, see? And when you turn away from that ocean of my love, you're not in a place of knowledge or wisdom. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust his love. This is a place we will never leave. First part of Proverbs, it says that, that the fear of the Lord, which is, is not being afraid of him, but just being all of his love, is the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom that finally funnels into the wisdom of Jesus Christ. When we doubt his love... We, between, we begin to doubt his word in our lives, both his words of grace and his word of guidance, and that all comes from his, his love uh, towards us. I, I, this is number two. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, these, these are the things that we're going to look at. Am I good? All right. These are the things we're going to look at, many more like them. Uh, origins. Cre there was a lot of dinosaur questions. <laughs> Creation and dinosaurs, human sexuality, boy, that's a hot topic. Abortion, it's ripping our nation apart right now. Lots of violence out there, it's that question of abortion. Salvation, there was a lot of those questions. This life with God and who gets it and why? And is God being fair? All right, uh, 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 and where is God when in my life? Where, where is God when that happens? These are some of the questions we're going to look at, right? And it's in these questions that sometimes we doubt his love for us because we doubt his word in our lives. Go ahead, put the next one up now. We trust the Bible as the authoritative and inerrant word of God. It is our touchstone for truth and action. It is the answer to the question, how do we know what we know? It's called the epistemological question. How do you know what you know? I'll tell you what, any other place you can't be sure, right? 
Because I've been wrong once in my life. How about you? You've been wrong once? Has there ever been a human being that hasn't been wrong once? God's never wrong. And this is what Jesus said when he walked the earth. He was praying to us. This is Monday Thursday. He's praying to the Heavenly Father. Sanctify them. Set them apart, right? By your truth. Read the rest of it with me. Your word is truth. That's it. Your word is truth. And he says this about the, about the Old Testament. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter. And, and, and uh, in, in the original, it taught, it's the two smallest letters of the, of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, a vav and a yov, right? So uh, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of the pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. You know, lots, lots of folks want to say, well, Jesus never talked about those things. He sanctified the whole text. He says it's truth. Not one stroke of a pen is going to go away. And he, and he said, and the Spirit of God will give to the writers of the New Testament the very words of God. That's why the writer said this. We speak in words taught, read the rest of it, by the Holy Spirit. When we, doubt, when we doubt God's love, we begin to doubt his word in our life. And that everything that comes from his word comes from his heart of love. Every single word comes from his heart of love. This is, where, this is the, the, the way we're playing the game, guys. We're not doubting these things. This is what, what we're going to speak from. Now, I, I, um, I hesitated to do this because this is a whole series in itself, and, and, and uh, Nate, Pastor Nathan covers this in one of, I think, Foundations 2. Uh, but, but, you know, in our time, many folks attack the, the, the Bible, the text, and I, I just want to throw a couple things up for you. Um, what, when was the New Testament written? And, and, and I love this quote. Uh, uh, it says, the scholarly consensus. What does that mean? All the smart guys, the guys that have done the work, right? The scholarly consensus based on solid evidence, solid evidence, all right, is that Paul's letters were penned between A.D. 50 and 66, three Gospels between A.D. 50 and 70, and John between 80 and 90. What does that mean? Well, Jesus, let's say he died in 30. Whoa. It's right there, huh? Written by eyewitnesses or those who are close to them. Whoa. You know about the only people that argue with this are those who come from a, a presupposition. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know who Stephen Hawking was? He's that physicist in England. You know, he, uh, he wrote, and I read his stuff. He wrote, I mean, obviously there's a lot of stuff I can't understand, the stuff he wrote. But, but he, he, the, what I can understand about this one issue, he, he said, he talked about all the evidence that was there that pointed toward a intelligent design pointed towards a creator. And, and he even had a, I can't remember the term for it, but he talked about it. He says, but of course that can't be true. Why? Because it was his presupposition. It was his place of faith that there can't be a creator God. Those that say that these things were written later is because they have this presupposition that, oh, you know, all those miracles couldn't happen. It doesn't matter if they were eyewitnesses. Jesus couldn't have risen, risen from the dead. Never matter that all these people suffered horrible lives and deaths saying that Jesus had risen from the dead. None of that matters, see? Because it's my presupposition, therefore these things had to be written later. But the scholarly consensus, based on solid evidence, is this. Other questions, uh, uh, um, how do we know we have what was first written? We've talked about this before. Nathan talks about it. Uh, but we have thousands and thousands of ancient documents, over 5,000 uh, ancient Greek documents that very close to the original, right? We absolutely have what was first written. This is a, anyone who's done any work knows that this is just a laughable statement, laughable question. And we, we have uh, copies that are so close to the original. Other ancient works in antiquity, there are thousands of the copies that we have, let's say, of um, Homer, uh, the, the Trojan horse. 1,100 years between when it was first written. And we have just a few copies, a handful, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and like 1,100 years between the original and first copy. It, it's just mind-boggling, and we accept these things as being true. Go ahead. How about other books? This is a new one, Right? Fairly new. Well, there were all these other books, you know. And I think it comes from the mindset of our time. The spirit of our time is the spirit of power. 
It's not the spirit of truth. It's the spirit of power. Obviously, there was power here. So the, the institution of the church, which again, you don't know anything about the, ch- the early Christians if you call it an institution. <laughs> you just don't know. They had no power. And they put down these, and these, the books they point to were written hundreds of years after the New Testament. Couldn't have been written by people who were there. Fallacious argument. How is the New Testament put together? And, and this is another one. Oh, you know, it's, it was a power move. It was just the opposite. All the Christians knew what the accepted books were. And they finally just said, these are the accepted books. We're going to never leave that place that the ocean of God's love surrounds us. And his word, the Bible, is truth. And one of the questions talked about, well, why aren't, we all together as, as Christians. Uh, it, Jesus prayed. He said that, that I, I want them to be one, Father. And, and it's interesting. Uh, it is in that context that Jesus speaks the word, your words, your word is truth. We have some Christian groups uh, in our world that, that turn their back on the Bible as the word of God. And, 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 and so it's gone so far as that they deny such things as, as the virgin birth or the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, our being together as a witness to the world was meant to be grounded in his word, which is truth. Now, certainly you can be nitpicking and you can, the term is sectarian, you can, it creates sex, right? But in the broad stroke of the brush, it's these truths that bring us together as a witness to the world. I love this from uh, John. Uh, on hearing this, Jesus was speaking his word, God's word. On, it was tough. On, many, on hearing this, many of the disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. Everybody was leaving him. Why? Because they didn't want to hear his word. They wanted their own word. Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We believe in your ocean of love for us. Therefore, we know that every word out of your mouth is not only the word of truth, but God's love revealed to us. This brings us to the third point. We live in love. It's a matter of our heart and actions. I think this is so important because, as I said, I believe the spirit of our age is one of power. I wrote this little, I'm sorry, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Okay, put the next one up. I wrote this little paragraph. We want to be justified in what we think. Uh, 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 We we hear this all the time. Um, I can't believe in a God who. Say what? I always thought that was kind of funky. I can't believe, wait a minute, God is God. You're either going to trust him or not. We we, we don't get to create him, thank God, right? We kind of, look at the world we made a mess of. And and so I just thought that we want to be justified in what we think. We want to be right. We want to win. We want to use the Bible as a club. We want permission to destroy our enemies. And sometimes you can take that permission out of there. We just want to destroy our enemies. Whoever disagrees with us, we're going to war, right? If we're going to trust the word of God, it calls us to a different place, a place of love. Love your enemies, Jesus says. Do good to those who hate you. If in this series we're looking to be right, to be justified, to have a club to beat over somebody's head, to win, we're in the wrong place. Speak the truth. Jesus says, your word is truth, right? Truth shall set you free. Jesus said that, but look, in 
love, this love that we know in Jesus, this agape love that's always looking for the best in the other person. Our lives are always characterized by love. It's so easy to let the spirit of our age invade us and want to have power and strength and anger and victory over the other as opposed to speaking the truths of Jesus into the lives of others because of love. This uh, First Corinthians passage, we read this in weddings a lot, and I, and I think that's, I love reading it in weddings, but I think we, we, we need, we kind of limit it sometimes. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, in other words, if I have the greatest words to say, and I'm absolutely right, right? If I speak in the men, the tongues of men and angels, but have not, read the word, love, read the, read the rest, but I am only a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I did a, I, I did a wedding once and I banged some pans together. And I said to the guy, you want your wife to hear that? Why don't you love her? What do we want people to hear? We can be absolutely right about stuff and be like clanging cymbals. If I have the gift of prophecy, in other words, if I can speak the things of God and know the things of God, and I'm absolutely sure, and can fathom all mysteries and mysteries of God, and if I have a great faith. Read the last line. If I have not love, I am nothing. We're never leaving from this point in the series. Love is patient. It's kind. Not proud not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs. That's how the truth of God's word calls us to live out our lives as we live in answers that he'll give us to these questions. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. I hope in this series we will check our anger. We will check our attitudes. We'll check the prevailing spirit of the age that looks for power over the other and look to live and be moved in love. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You don't want to leave me too, do you? Jesus asked the 12. You don't want to leave this place of love also, do you? Is it too tough of a message for you? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We live in that ocean of his love. We know his truth. He calls us to live in love towards others. How are we going to play this game? We start with the heart of God and we never leave it. We trust the Bible the authoritative, inerrant word of God, it is our touchstone for truth and action, is the answer to the question, how do we know what we know? And we live in love. It's a matter of our heart and actions. Will you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, um, we're excited. Uh, excited to begin this series, excited to take our questions be t- uh, to your uh, love and to your, the wisdom of your word. We pray, Lord, that your spirit might always empower us uh, to love as you have loved us. We pray in your name. Amen. We stand, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
king sent into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we start our prayers, I'd just like to remind you that uh, we have prayer partners here with us today, um, Peter and um, Sandy. And during communion, they will uh, be at the prayer banners, uh, one in front here and one back there. And uh, they would love to pray with you over anything that you would like prayer for, whether it's yourself, your family, your neighbor, whomever. Uh, and I'm just, I hope you don't mind, Peter, but I'm going to say that he said to me earlier this morning, Gee, I hope somebody will come and pray with me while I'm there. <laughs> I hope you will too. Okay. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty Father, give wisdom and guidance to all those you have put into positions of authority. Stave off violence and war and preserve peace. Lord, in your mercy. Great physician, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer, especially Steve and Kim and Judy. Do not let them lose heart. Help fix their eyes on Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty Father, you raised Jesus from the dead. We too know that we shall have new life. Comfort those who mourn with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, how often do we forget to thank you. May you always receive our thanks and praise for your unfailing love and never-ending goodness. Today, we especially thank and praise you for the birth of August, son of Hayden and Amanda, grandson of Peter and Cynthia. May you direct his ways, guard and keep him in health, and in due time, bring him into your family. Lord, in your mercy. All-knowing God, may we know your will. May we humble ourselves to you and more easily to those who think differently than ourselves. May we always desire to seek your wisdom rather than our own. May our compass always be pointed at you. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father. For the sake of him who died and rose again and taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We enjoy the presence of God in a supernatural way through the Lord's Supper. We come to receive the true body and blood of Christ and the spiritual benefits they provide. Forgiveness of sins, life with him now, and life face to face with him forever. We come to be strengthened in our faith, knowing that God the Holy Spirit, through his word tied to these things we can see, comes to us to strengthen our faith and empower us for Christian living. As the words, promises, presence, and power of God is sealed to us in the true body and blood of Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Come for all is now ready. Thanks be to God.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We employ that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. May this body broken and bloodshed strengthen and preserve you in the true faith, a life never ending to part in his peace and joy. Amen. You may be seated. We just want to show you a short video uh, on Acres of Hope. are in the staff meeting. Hi, staff. <laughs> um, yeah, and we just wanted to uh, make a, a quick announcement and just some exciting news that we have, um, not just this team in this room, but um, our Inspire Hope ministry team has decided to get behind Acres. We, we love the work that you guys are doing. We're so inspired by all the stories that we hear of the women and the kids on campus. Yeah. And um, so, drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to commit $12,000 um, for the next, uh, over the course of the next six months, so $2,000 a month. Oh my word. Oh my God. You guys are already, you guys are already so amazing in so many ways, not just financially, but I mean, you guys pray for us all the time and pray over us and you know, coming out here and using your muscle to help us out. That's just absolutely such a tremendous blessing. I can't even 
Okay, I'm not going to cry on a Zoom call. So um, <laughs> if, if we were in person, I would, but no, sorry, no, not on Zoom. So especially because he's recording it, but you guys are just, you know, everybody there. Um, I, I ran into, I know Matt, I ran into you at the, the car show, but I ran into other folks from St. Matthew's too. And it was just so heartwarming. How many different people came up and said, my church supports you. We really love what you're doing. And so just knowing that you're, you're not only supporting us that way, but you're sharing with us, you know, sharing with your friends and family about the amazing things that are happening here at Acres of Hope. And, you know, this support, it, it goes a long ways. As you guys know, we're, we're very frugal. And um, this level of support is just such a tremendous blessing to help these families. I mean, we're, we're full up and we've got a, a new gal right now that's ready to have a little guy, a little baby any day now. So we're waiting for that. And, um, wow, you guys, this is just what a, what a tremendous blessing. So, ah. Well, and we're lucky we get to be the messengers. Um, it really is the generosity of the people of St. Matthew. Um, yeah. We get to share this good news, um, but it's really the way that they've stepped up to give mm -hmm. um, in these uncertain times. I know. Incredible. Yeah, and you're right, and, and definitely in, the, in these uncertain times, and with so many other um so many other competing you know uh needs that are out there right now in our community and and communities abroad and and you know things happening around the world and and just knowing that you know your families are willing to to make that kind of commitment to to help these women and these children here is just i can't even tell you how much i truly truly appreciate it from the bottom top and middle of my heart i really do and i know I know everybody else here, Jackie's going to be just jumping up and down like crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Well, we'll figure out logistics and how to get the checks written to you. Pastor Nathan, would you pray? Absolutely. For the ministry? Oh, please. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Um, it is a, a privilege uh, to partner uh, with you in the places that uh, you are making a difference in the world uh, to restore those who are, are broken down. And uh, Lord, we just ask that... Uh, your spirit would flood into uh, the leadership there at Acres of Hope and all the women uh, the children are there and that uh, you would continue to uh, touch them with your grace and your love uh, through the, the real tangible actions uh, of uh, the whole team there at Acres of Hope. And Lord, that you would build them up in relationship and uh, bless the work of the leadership of Acres of Hope and all the staff there as uh, they work with these women and help to restore uh, their dignity and their identity and empower them for living. Lord, we give thanks uh, for them doing that hard work. And Lord, we ask that you would help them to see uh, the rewards of their labor and lives change and that you would give them that vision uh, that encourages them uh, to keep going uh, when the days are tough and when uh, people fall down and uh, need the hand of grace to be held up again. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, yeah. Okay. There's one tear. Just one. <laughs> Lisa, thank you. Okay, one out of each eye, so sorry. We're grateful for you and for your work and for the difference that you're making in um, a woman's life and in the, the children and the future for them and their family. Yeah, it's, it, I'll tell you, it's it's a privilege. I'm, I'm humbled and honored every day just to get to be a part of it in any small way that I can. And, you know, we've got two women getting baptized this month, too. So. Woohoo! Okay. Awesome. God is working and one of these ladies came in had no prior faith at all and just now she's leading morning devotions and yeah so God is working in these oh, women's awesome. lives and and the children and all of ours so yeah, yeah we're all yeah. we're all equally blessed and transformed by everything happening here so thank you thank you again for being such a huge part of that you're doing it awesome all right. Thanks, Lisa. Thank Take you, care. Lisa. Bye. Bye. You too. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye. So that's what you're a part of uh, when you give to the ministry here. You can do it three ways, online or, or with your phone or in person. The box is here, or you can mail uh, an offering in. Uh, awesome stuff, what we get to be a part of because of you all. Thank you. So we have announcements here real quick. You want to put that up? Yeah, there we go. Um, 
So we have, yeah, the first thing is, is well, I didn't expect it this way. The service time changes. That's next Sunday. When is it? Next Sunday. This service will be at 8.30, uh, and the other service will be at 10. Uh, and and uh, again, the, the surveys came back overwhelmingly that folks wanted more time together. So we hope that this works, and, and uh, as things go forward, Maybe we could add a, a, an 11 o'clock service as well. Uh, so, so the service time changes starts next week. Uh, our, we're, we're sending, uh, I, I'm not sure how many kids at this point. I think it's like 20 of ours and 20 young girls, rough, probably more than that now, uh, uh, to, to the National Youth Gathering. So, so next Sunday, uh, we've got uh, the Hungarians here. We'll have a bake sale. Uh, we'll do a car wash. Um, and also my, uh, my daughter, uh, she's got a different last name because she married a guy. So... Uh, <laughs> But uh, she'll be here from Hungary, and she'll, uh, she'll talk during the services, and she'll have an uh, extended time at 1130 to talk about uh, the ministry that she's a part of. Uh, so you're, you're welcome to be a part of that as well. All right, please stand now for the blessing. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look upon you with his favor, his grace, and give you his peace in Jesus. Amen. We sing verses 1 through 3, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. great to be with you today. I pray that you were blessed. Uh, remember, you live in that ocean of love that God surrounds you with, and, and you can live in his truth, and, and you can live in his love towards others. May God be with you uh, this week. <laughs>